Another way that we can do malware analysis is to look at network traffic. You might get what's called a PCAP, packet capture file. So someone gives you a PCAP from yesterday and they go, hey, I took a network tap um, five minutes off our firewall and every hour I took a five minute tap. And you might have to look through that log data. And there's tools that you can do that with, but a lot of us use things like Wireshark for something like that. Now there's other things, right? There's Chaos Reader and HTTP readers and things like that. And there's also some things we're gonna talk about later down here. We'll get to that though. Most of us are doing traffic analysis with PCAPs. When you get to some really large companies, you'll start to see some larger entities have what's called flow data. Flow data is, let's say I have a signature, which is just a snapshot, like, hey, if I see the word attack and that's bad, the bad part, I'm going to say, hey, every time I see TAC, that's bad. Well, what ends up happening is somebody might write something like tick, tack, toe, and because he sees TAC, he goes, uh oh. <laughs> There's the attack. Well, what you end up going is, well, you know, if I had flow data and I could see the traffic that was before it and the traffic that was after it, that's why people really like flow data. Because now they can go, that's not really an attack. That's somebody looking for tic-tac-toe. And, and I know that sounds unbelievably trivial, but believe it or not, when you really start looking at a lot of, a lot of network traffic, it ends up being almost that stupid, you know, just where you're like, no, that's not an attack. Look, right? If you can get flow data, you can really see the whole network transaction. Whereas if you just have signature data, you end up with just a snapshot and you could be making this mistake, right? Our last thing is going to be log file analysis. So with log file analysis, what we end up with is commonly stuff like our regular raw logs. Now, your raw logs could be web server logs, router logs, switch logs, you know, um, uh, any type of network device logs, uh, uh, your IDS logs, can be all this kind of stuff. A lot of times you might have some kind of clunky way of looking at that stuff. You might write uh, command line things to look at it. You know, like when I used to do this, I would do a lot of grep, you know, which is a Unix command that lets you search for something. Uh, you might also start to see people doing like command line stuff in scripting languages. People doing like PowerShell or Perl or Python to parse logs and kind of make it a little easier for us to see what we want to see because you might have, you know, gigabytes of PCAPs that you got to look through. You might actually get like a real log parsing tool, a little GUI based application that you can you know, filter out data and go, oh, I need to look for the logs between these two IPs, right? A little GUI-based application. You might step into something called a network security monitoring solution. Something like Security Onion, that's real popular these days, where it's a tool that brings together a ton of network security tools and network traffic tools all under one real interface. It kind of lets you thumb through it. Now, it might be a little kludgy. Security Onion's a good example of something that's a little kludgy, but you know, if you really just want a snapshot of what's going on in your data on your network, a Security Onion is a pretty good network security monitoring solution. I think it's a good way to get started quick too. If you're new to this world and you're trying to get spun up in this stuff, good way to kind of get started. What you're starting to see a lot of people move to is something like SEIM, Security Information Event management solutions. SIM solutions are the big boys in the security industry. Really expensive. Now, there is an open source one called OSSIM, right? So it's Open Source Security Information Management, OSIM. They've got a commercial product, uh, Alien Vault, right? That's the company that makes their commercial portion of it, but they have a completely open source one that'll kind of give you an idea. You'll hear people talking about products like ArcSight. There's a real big commercial one that a lot of commercial entities are using, and effectively what it does is it takes all of your security events. Let's take your intrusion detection system events. Let's take your firewall events. 
let's take your log events from your router, your switch, and your servers, and then let's correlate it with your vulnerability scan data. So if I see an event at the firewall, I see an event at the IDS, I see an event in your logs, do they all match up to be the whatever type of attack? And if they do, let me check last week's vulnerability scan report and see if you're really vulnerable to that attack. And if it is, let me escalate it and create a trouble ticket. So that's what a SIM solution is doing. It's, it's kind of taken a lot of the steps that an intrusion analyst would do to figure out, hey, is this really something I should be paying attention to? So it's called event correlation. So event correlation is the big sales point that differentiates between an NSM and an SEIM, Network Security Monitor, Security Information Event Management. It's going to let you differentiate between the two. And this is what you're paying the more money for, because effectively it's cutting down what a human would be doing. The last thing, threat intel. So with threat intel, what you're going to be getting is a list of bad IP addresses, signatures of attacks, hashes of files. Somebody finds a bad file, they take an MD5 hash or SHA-1 hash of it and go, hey, if you ever see this file, that's the blah, blah, blah hacker group. That's their tool. It's bad. Or you're going to get what are called IOCs, indicators of compromise. And it'll be any of this stuff. Hey, it creates this process or this service. It, you know, uh, sets these registry keys. Uh, it leaves these things on the file system. Or it communicates locally or remotely with these IPs, you know, moves laterally this way. Those make up what are called IOCs. A lot of people in the security industry now are moving into threat intel, where they're purchasing this threat intel information. They're trying to get you know, security vendor A or security vendor B to give them the list of who's the bad guys. What do their files look like? You know, what do their attacks look like? What do their files look like? How do I know if I'm compromised? In other words, someone has done all of this, right? They've done all of this stuff and they can give you a list of bad IPs that the malware communicates with. They can give you a list of signatures. This is what the attack looks like. They can give you a list of hashes. This is what the file looks like. Or they can give you these indicators of compromise to let you know, hey, you've been caught with something bad. And a lot of people are selling this threat intel as a subscription service. Hey, every month you, you download these list of rules or hashes or whatever, and now you can know kind of what's going on in the security landscape, which IP addresses you should be blocking, which things you should be looking for in your environment. When you hear people talking about our favorite word, APT, right, advanced persistent threat. This is usually the, oh my God, it's so bad, right? This is usually what they're talking about, state-sponsored hackers. State-sponsored hackers, attackers who are uh, breaking into our defense industrial base, our large financial institutions, stealing the really, really super sensitive data, uh, that's APT. And when people are really worried about APT, one of the big things that they're purchasing is threat intel, where they get this list of all this stuff. So I'm hoping that this kind of helps you out today with just kind of understanding the landscape and going, all right, so that's what all this stuff is.